Let's get right into it. Number eight, why do we have to sleep? Scientists still don't fully know why we have to sleep. What they do know is what happens when we don't. We get cranky, clumsy, and eventually our brains turn into mush. Some researchers think sleep might act like a cleaning service for your brain. While you're sleeping, your brain is supposedly washing away all the junk that built up during the day. In fact, your brain cells actually shrink while you sleep, creating more space for the brain's cleaning fluid to wash away the garbage. But if you stay awake too long, your brain starts to eat itself. That's right. Your brain literally starts digesting its own cells. And think about this. If sleep wasn't absolutely crucial, wouldn't at least one species have evolved to not need it? Being awake all the time would be a huge advantage. You could hunt more, eat more, and never have to worry about being eaten while taking a nap. Yet every single animal needs to become completely helpless for hours each day. Even jellyfish sleep, and they don't even have brains. So whatever sleep does, it's so important that nature made sure everything needs it. And nobody knows exactly why. Number seven, why fingers get wrinkly in the bath. You know how your fingers look like tiny raisins after spending too long in the bath? For years, scientists told us it was just water soaking into our skin, making it puffy and wrinkled. Turns out, they were completely wrong. Your fingers actually get wrinkly because your nervous system tells them to. It's like your body has a built-in program that says, hey, we're in water. Time to get wrinkly. When this happens, the blood vessels under your skin start squeezing together, which makes your skin scrunch up. But nobody knows why we evolved to do this. Some scientists think the wrinkles work like tire treads, helping us grip things better when they're wet. They even did experiments showing that people with wrinkly fingers are better at picking up wet marbles. So maybe our ancestors needed this ability to grab slippery fish or climb wet rocks without falling. But other scientists aren't buying it. They ask, if this is so helpful, why don't our fingers stay wrinkly all the time? And why does it only happen to our fingers and toes? The truth is, we still don't know for sure. Number six, why we yawn when others yawn. You're sitting in class trying to focus when suddenly someone yawns. Before you know it, the whole class starts yawning, like they're part of some weird yawning orchestra. Scientists call this contagious yawning, but they still can't agree on why it happens. Some believe it's your brain's way of staying cool, like a built-in air conditioner. When you yawn, cool air rushes in and helps lower your brain temperature. Other scientists think it's all about being part of the group, like when early humans lived in caves. If one person yawned to stay alert, everyone else would yawn too. It was your brain's way of saying, I got your back, cave buddy. Even dogs can catch yawns from humans. That's right. Your yawn is so powerful, it can control other species. And get this. Babies start yawning before they're even born. Tiny humans floating in the womb are already practicing their yawns. And once you start yawning, you can't stop it. Try to stop a yawn halfway through. It's like trying to stop a sneeze. Your body just says, nope, we're doing this. Number five, why ice cream gives you brain freeze. You're enjoying your favorite ice cream on a hot summer day. You take a big bite because it's just too good to eat slowly. Suddenly, your head feels like someone just jammed an icicle through your brain. Scientists actually know exactly what's happening here. They just don't know why our bodies do it. When you eat something super cold, it touches the roof of your mouth. Your body freaks out and thinks it's under attack. The tiny blood vessels in your mouth quickly squeeze tight, then suddenly expand again. There's a big nerve in your face called the trigeminal nerve, and it loves to overreact. This nerve is connected to both your mouth and your forehead. So when it senses chaos in your mouth, it gets confused and tells your brain the pain is coming from your head. It's like if someone kicked your foot, but you felt the pain in your elbow. But here's the mystery. Nobody knows why we evolved to have this response. What survival advantage do we get from a splitting headache when eating ice cream too fast? 
Maybe it's just our body's way of teaching us table manners. It's basically saying, oh, you want to inhale that ice cream like a vacuum cleaner? Here's a headache to help you reconsider your life choices. Number four, curly hair versus straight hair. You'd think with all our advanced science, we'd have this one figured out, but this playground question still puzzles researchers. They know genes are involved, but solving it is like trying to piece together a puzzle where half the pieces are missing. Scientists have found a few key genes that are supposed to be the masterminds behind hair shape. But just when they think they've cracked the code, they discover there might actually be as many as 80 different genes involved. That means your hair is basically running a committee meeting just to decide whether to curl or not. Here's where it gets even stranger. Curly hair was the original human default. So if you've got straight hair somewhere in your family tree, one of your ancestors had a genetic mutation. Scientists think straight hair might have evolved because it was better at keeping heads warm in cold climates, since it allows natural oils to travel down the strands more easily. But even with all these theories, scientists still can't fully explain why one kid ends up with corkscrew curls while their sibling has hair straight as a ruler. Number three, the purpose of dreams. You know those weird movies your brain plays at night while you're sleeping? Despite all our fancy brain scanning machines, we still don't know for sure why our brains do this. Your brain is actually super busy while you're dreaming. It's almost as active as when you're awake, like it's running a marathon while you're lying there drooling on your pillow. Some scientists think dreams are your brain's way of solving problems, like a midnight therapy session with yourself. But no theory fully explains why you dreamed about your math teacher turning into a talking sandwich. What we do know is that if you stop someone from dreaming, they start acting really strange. So strange that they might not even remember their own name. And it's not just humans. Even animals dream. You can watch a sleeping dog run and bark in their sleep, probably chasing a dream squirrel. Birds dream too, rehearsing their songs while they sleep. On average, we spend about six years of our lives dreaming, yet we still don't know exactly why. Number two, why we like music. Ever notice how babies start bopping their heads to music before they can even talk? It's like we're born with tiny DJs in our brains. But here's the thing. Music isn't necessary for survival. You can't eat it, and it won't keep you warm. So why did our ancestors spend valuable time making music when they could have been hunting or gathering food? Scientists are still scratching their heads over this one. But here's what's fascinating. Every single human culture ever discovered has music. From tribes deep in the Amazon to modern cities, people just can't stop making beats. Some scientists think music might have worked like prehistoric social media. It brought groups together and helped them bond. Kind of like how strangers at a concert feel connected, even though they don't know each other. But that still doesn't explain why music makes our brains release dopamine. The same chemical you get from eating chocolate or falling in love. It's like your brain is treating Baby Shark the same way it treats winning the lottery. Some researchers think our love for music might be an evolutionary accident. Maybe our brains evolved to process language and emotions, and music just hijacked those circuits. Basically, music found a back door into our pleasure center and decided to throw a party. Number one, why animals can't talk. So your dog is sitting there, giving you that look like he's got the secrets of the universe trapped in his tiny brain. But all you get is a woof. We don't fully understand why animals can't talk like us. Animals actually have really complex ways of communicating. Dolphins have special whistles that act like names for each other. Bees do little dances to tell their friends where to find the good flowers. But none of them can put together sentences like we do. Humans have this unique ability to take words and rearrange them into endless new combinations. For example, if I teach you a made-up word like wug, you instantly know how to say wugs. Try teaching that to a parrot, and it'll just keep repeating wug until you hand it a cracker. Animals are stuck with a limited menu of sounds and signals. It's like they're using emojis while we're writing novels. Your dog can say, food now, or danger, but he can't tell you about the weird dream he had last night. Scientists have even tried teaching chimps to talk, but after years of research, the best they could manage was teaching them to ask for bananas. Meanwhile, 
humans can write entire novels about sparkly vampires. It's like nature gave us the premium talking package and left everyone else with the basic version. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe so you don't miss them.